Well, hey there, guys, and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going to be making some ABS vice jaws. Well, it's another Alternative Tuesday and another week of working with the alternative material being ABS. And I also thought that this week, instead of showing the cutesy little projects, say like our picnic table or our uh, Canadian themed kazoo or that sort of thing, uh, I thought that I would bring you something practical to use the ABS for other than just crafting sort of things. And for that, we have one of these. And I think every shop has one of these somewhere in it. And that is, of course, the old steel vise, which is great for if you want to hold on to something, say, uh, that is metal that won't be marred by the stock jaws of this vise. But what if you wanted to put something in there that was a little more delicate and you wanted something a little less marring? Well, that's where the ABS comes into play. So what we're going to start off with is taking some measurements of the vise that you have in your shop. Well, before we start, there are two measurements that we require so that we know what size of ABS to cut for our blanks. And that would be the width of your vice jaws. In my case, it'll be four inches. It's a little less than four, but we'll give us ourselves a little bit of play there and say four inches. And the other measurement that you want to take will be right here and that will be the width of the jaws on your vise and in my case they are three quarters of an inch wide so those are the two measurements that you need in my case three quarters of an inch by four inches well in order to make these jaws we will be using half inch thick ABS plastic and what we need to do is that measurement for our width of our jaws, which in my case was three quarters, we're going to add one quarter of an inch to that measurement. So, uh, I mean, if yours was five eighths, then it would be seven eighths. If with my case, three quarters, it's gonna be one inch. So for the stock that we need, we're gonna need two pieces that are half an inch thick, one inch wide, and four inches long. Well, the next thing that you want to do is you want to set the height of your blade on your table saw to mimic whatever the measurement was that you had for the width of the blade on your or the jaw on your vise. Uh, in my case, it was three quarters of an inch. So I've set my blade height to three quarters of an inch. I'm also going to set my fence for one quarter of an inch. Uh, in thickness and we're going to run through our blanks in this configuration. What we're going to end up doing in, uh, essentially is cutting a rabbit out of one side that will be one quarter of an inch uh, deep and it will be three quarters of an inch long. leaving your fence exactly where it is. You now want to lower your blade so that it's only a quarter of an inch above the table and you want to place your stock down in such a way as to clear out that piece and open up that rabbit cut. <laughs> Well, if you've been following along up to this point in time, you should have something that looks like this. And that would be one inch wide, four inches long. This lip here is half inch, 
whereas this one here is a quarter and you've got that rabbit cut right here. That's three quarters of an inch high and it's a quarter of an inch wide. So at this point now, what we need to do is we need to get a half inch Forstner bit and we're gonna drill it right in the middle, centered top and bottom of this three quarter dado and centered on the four inch length. And we're going to drill a half inch hole that is going to be one eighth of an inch deep. Well, the next thing that you're going to need is two half inch rare earth magnets and these things are brutally strong. I think these ones hold a total of nine pounds in weight, but what you're going to have to do is we're going to use some CA glue in these holes here and glue in a couple of magnets, one into each one. Now here's the thing. You want to make sure that when these things go together and they'll form a T when they're together, you want to make sure that the magnets are not going to repel each other. So in most cases with these rare earth magnets, they have marks on them and the marks represent like poles. So opposites attract, likes repel. So just make sure that you have a marked one on the outside of one jaw and a non-marked one on the outside of the other jaw. So let's glue those in place and then we can head over to the vise. And before things get the chance to set up, just make sure that you do in fact have them so that they are attracting to each other and not repelling. Now, as you saw in that last little segment, I did round off just with a little bit of hand sanding the top edges of here just to surf, soften that sharp edge. So here is the piece now and because you measured it out each one will snap on to each one of our vice jaws just like that with a little bit of overhang on either side because we gave it that little extra and basically that top lip of that rabbit keeps it from going any further down and it covers the entire jaw of the vice and clamps in there nice and securely. Let me just give you a side shot of this here. And there we have the vise and of course our jaws that we just cut and the magnets just snap them into place and then they just basically act as the jaws of your vise but they're not going to mar the material that you're working with. So essentially if you wanted to clamp some plastics in here now, you could. If you wanted to clamp some wood in here now, you could without the marring of those steel jaws. Just remember though, <laughs> no plastic in the world is going to stop the pressure and the strength of this vise from crushing in a material. So easy on the uh, spinach there Popeye and uh, go lightly on the touch with these. And there you have it. ABS plastic jaws for your steel bench vise. Guys, not only is this a quick and fun project, but it's also a very practical one. There are some shops, and I was one of them, that only had that one steel vise, and there was nothing more frustrating than trying to use it for woodworking because you had no alternative, and then you end up marring your piece. So these jaws would have gone a long way to being softer and a little easier on the wood. It's also good, let's just say, if you want it to hold something like threads of a bolt. You could use it on there. Now mind you, those threads will mar the plastic on those jaws. So now you've got that issue happening. Either way, guys, it's a fun project. I hope you're going to try it. Um, I will put all the links 
below as to where you can obtain some of this plastic if you're interested. Uh, either way, guys, I hope you're going to join me for another Alternative Tuesday.